I personally have done this multiple times. Uh, almost every deployment that I've been part of, and, and I've over 78 months deployed, this is different. This is specifically, the SBAB is specifically resourced in terms of both personnel and equipment to accomplish that specific mission. So it's no longer ad hoc. We are trained with respect to advisory skills as well as force protection skills in order to accomplish the mission. And the people that are doing it are the people that have volunteered to do it and want to do and believe in this mission. That's the difference. The mission statement is something I absolutely uh, believe in. Um, and I think it's something that is, is needed uh, as far as the Army having a dedicated unit to do the advise and assist mission. And so I volunteered for it. So the SFAB, uh, as a mission statement, is you know, to take our conventional forces uh, apply them against a long-term problem of improving partner capacity in our foreign partners. And so in the SVAB, you'll do what you've been doing as a conventional force soldier, but you'll be focusing on providing your skills to your foreign partner. It's a great opportunity. Uh, one, you're gonna be uh, surrounded by other folks just like you that are want to do your job, that are masters at their profession, um, and focused on the task at hand with minimal distractions. Uh, you're gonna be go into environments where they're going to want to you know, hear what you got. They're going to want to you know, be like you. And so it's a great opportunity to kind of grow as a soldier and grow as a person. Our manner of performance, our measure of performance, if you will, is how well our partners do in, in combat or in Afghanistan. It starts with you know, war fighting competence. So every one of the folks we hire into this organization are, are you know, experts in their field. And so if you're a fire supporter, you're a good fire supporter already. Uh, but what we rely on is within that, that person already is the ability to, as you said, display empathy, to have some patience, to have flexibility, uh, to be able to communicate complex ideas uh, within a cultural environment uh, to make sure it resonates with their, with their partner. And then with that technical competence and that, that kernel of, of you know, personal attributes, you then build on that with, through training. And the training we emphasize talks about you know, how to communicate, you know, how, to, how to influence, how to negotiate. Uh, because in a lot of ways, working with your partner is a day-to-day -day negotiation. The amount of realism and um, level of detail um, down to the smell. I mean, literally, there, there were times I thought I was actually in Afghanistan. Um, you know, whether it be um, you're in a local village, you're conducting a shur with key leaders. Um, the storylines that went behind it. Um, to include the role players. That, that honestly, if, if there's one huge takeaway I'd say about the training you know, resources at JRTC, it, it'd be the role players. As far as teaching, coaching, and mentoring as a non-commissioned officer, it's, it's in my blood. Um, I think as far as the tactical piece, the maneuver piece, especially as an infantryman, I, I'm pretty good with doing that stuff. The intellectual piece, however, that comes with advising a, uh, a host nation security uh, uh, force or the individual that I'm advising, is really the next piece. I've been in the Army 10 years and I've been on the line the entire time so I feel like just my experience of how I dealt with uh, being in Afghanistan and when I, what things I can possibly change when I was used to helping train, I feel like I have a bigger, I'll be able to play a bigger role here to actually affect that and see it. We talked about the, the art of advising and we always talk about the, the science and how we use culture uh, in our advantage by acknowledging the, our differences but also finding commonalities and ways we can move forward together. I totally trust my soldiers. We've hired the best. We've resourced them you know, for the mission that they've been assigned. Uh, we've trained them against the hardest aspects of their mission. The, the time for us to deploy is now. We are ready. I've never felt more ready for this particular mission set, especially. I mean, it's a great opportunity to, to do something different, um, work with some great soldiers, uh, challenging environment. You know, you've got, a, you've got an outcome that matters and a purpose, and that's all a soldier can ask for. I'm ready, 100% ready.